Hey, Life Groups, as we get into tonight, uh, just know that next week is the last week of Life Groups. And so I'd love you to plan a dinner for that just to connect and be together and have some time together. Um, so <coughs> that's the first thing. Second thing is we have a counseling ministry that's active. So if there are people you know or people in the life group or you yourself need counseling, please email counseling at otc.org.za and we will get you stuck into one of our 12 counselors uh, who, are, who are really good and I expect that they will serve you well. But tonight, I'm not sure how you are feeling. Um, there's, there's the saying that ignorance looks like confidence from a distance. And I, I think that there's, uh, I'm chatting to two groups of people, the ignorant and the scared. <laughs> and, uh, and I want to talk to you about becoming people of faith. But um, the, what ha- just happened in South Africa is extraordinary. And um, God, I'm sure, knows exactly what's going on. But I can very clearly understand why people are panicking. If the MK um, forms a coalition with the ANC, it would seem that we would go into quite dark days. If they form a coalition with the EFF and the PA and the ANC forms a coalition with the DA, it seems like we could go into phenomenal light days. Uh, But we don't put our faith in politics. However, politics can definitely affect us, so we pray about politics. But before I dive deep, I just want to ask the question, how are you feeling about our country right now? Are you scared? Are you indifferent? Are you ignorant? Uh, Are you in the space where Jesus is in control and you don't really mind? What's the temperature of your life right now when it comes to South Africa and the next season for us? Now, I want to dive into a biblical context for how we look at the world during scary times. Because arguably, the globe is in scary times. The war in Israel is critical. And uh, what's happening there could escalate quite quickly and take us into end times situations with Armageddon. What's happening with Russia and Ukraine is a picture of what, I guess, the Bible says is going to happen, that we'll have wars and rumors of wars, that we'll have earthquakes and natural disasters, and it says that these things will be like birth pangs, so they'll happen faster and faster and faster. So the world is a little bit chaotic, and, uh, and so is South Africa feeling today. So I want to take us to how we process and how we remain steady. In Jeremiah 17 verse 5, you will know the scripture, it says, this is what the Lord says, Cursed is the one who trusts in man, who draws strength from mere flesh, and whose heart turns away from the Lord. That person will be, will be like a bush in the wasteland. They will not see prosperity when it comes. Listen to that. They will not see prosperity when it comes. They'll be blinded to prosperity when it's coming at them. They will dwell in the parched places of the desert in a salt land where no one lives. But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes. Its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. I I love these words and I think we should learn this text, but uh, I love that you'll be like a tree planted by the water, that your roots will go down deep and, and you'll into the stream and you'll produce shade and floods and droughts. I love these words. You'll be an evergreen. I don't know if you can feel the scripture, but it's, it's a promise to, that you can live in chaos, in peace and prosperity and stability and strength. This is what the scripture is saying. It's saying the man who trusts in God deeply confidently trust in God, will be like this tree. I want you to just take a few moments because I want you to imagine what your life would look like if you were like this tree. Because I think the greatest role of the church right now 
is to be anchored into God and to be the trees in the wasteland, in a, in a country that I think is going to shake and tremble and be very scared. I want to speak about how you can be that tree. So I want you to just have a discussion about both the scripture and what that tree would look like. If, if you were to be, live out the scripture, imagine what your life would look like. Imagine what your emotions would look like. Imagine how you would affect community. Imagine how people would look to you as a place of shade and, and of safety and an anchor for their souls. So have a discussion about how your life could look as a tree for the world around you. Now I want to spend a little bit of time helping you stay in the, the thinking that uh, keeps you like a tree, which is what we would call spiritual warfare. It's taking thoughts captive, the Bible says. Because it is so difficult to process reality with your mind set on God. It's almost like you need to look at one, then put it aside, look at God, make Him big again, and then bring the reality of the world into the context of God. And that process will happen again and again as you get triggered by various things that are happening around you. But... Um, we want to be people of deep confidence in God. And there's sort of, there are a few different types of confidence. There's self-confidence. Self-confidence is when you're confident in, in your ability that you've, I don't know, you're an ethetist and you are able to make money anywhere and so it doesn't really matter what happens to the economy. Confidence can be in your, in your talent, in your sporting ability, in your bank account. It can be in a whole bunch of things that comes from you, self-confidence. And uh, the Bible strictly and direly warns people against self-confidence. It says things like, it can be ripped away in a moment. Um, it's, it's like a vanishing mist. The Bible also kind of points to what I'll call borrowed confidence, which is confidence either put into a person or people around you, or put into an economy, or your job. It's, it's when something, other than God, gives you a feeling of safety and security, borrowed confidence. When someone says to you, man, you've got what it takes, and you feel confident as a result, it's borrowed, because you have to give it back. It's, it's not intrinsic to you. you. You don't hold it. It's different to self-confidence. What I've found in life is that most Christians have a bit of self-confidence and a little bit of borrowed confidence and a little bit of God confidence. But when you go through trying times, what you get to do is shift from self and borrowed to faith, which, as we know, faith is the confident expectation that God will come through for you. It is the assurance of what we don't see. Um, that there is a God who holds everything together. And so confidence is defined as the feeling or belief that one can have faith in or merely, or sorry, or rely on someone or something. Now, there are a bunch of scriptures that I will use in my personal life when I am trying to get my confidence in God up. And so these scriptures as I read News 24 and Daily Maverick, these scriptures kind of just sit right next to them so that I can get my faith back and realigned to God. So I'm going to read a few to you, and, uh, and then you can see how you can make a strategy to deal with the challenges that you face. So Proverbs 3, 5 to 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding your own understanding of economics and politics, your own understanding of your kid's education and future and what school will provide the best job, your own understanding of where you should live. But in all your ways, submit to God and He will make your paths straight. Psalm 3014. 
Even strong young lions sometimes go hungry, but those who trust in the Lord will lack no good thing. Psalm 37, 3. Trust in the Lord and do good, then you will live safely in the land and prosper. Psalm 37, 9. For the wicked will be destroyed, but those who trust in the Lord will possess the land. Psalm 125. Those who trust in the Lord are as secure as, secure as Mount Zion. They will not be defeated, but will endure forever. Isaiah 40, 31. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Psalm 44. Oh, the joys of those who trust in the Lord, who have no confidence in the proud or in those who worship idols. Psalm 146, verse 3. Don't put your confidence in powerful people. There is no help for you there. Or Isaiah 30, verse 15, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, the Holy One of Israel, only in returning to me and resting in me will you be saved. In quietness and confidence is your strength. Now let's go to the New Testament. Philippians 3, 3, for we who worship by the Spirit of God are the ones who are truly circumcised. We rely on what Christ has done for us. We put no confidence in human effort. Or John 7, 38, he who believes in me, as the scriptures have said, from his innermost being will flow continually rivers of living water. Now, let me read the last one. In Hebrews 10, 34, after they've gone through much persecution, it says this, you suffered along with those who were thrown into jail, and when all you owned was taken from you, you accepted it with joy, you knew There were better things awaiting for you that will last forever. So don't throw away this confident trust in the Lord. Remember the great reward it brings you. Patient endurance is what you need now so that you will continue to do God's will. Then you will receive all that he has promised. Now, I want these scriptures to do two things for you. I want them to wash over you and I want you to let them just settle you. But I want them also to challenge you because you're going to go through so many conversations, so many bribes, so many work conversations that are literally going to spark terror about what's happening in the currency, current country at the moment, the, the worst possible scenario. Bad news sells, good news doesn't, so you'll see it all over social media and, and, and everywhere you look. But the thing I, I want you to think about is all of these promises of trust in the Lord. Now, most of them are to do with enjoying the benefit in the land of the living. That's in our life. But in this Hebrews one, he goes, you've suffered now. You've gone through stuff now because you've stayed true to me because you've made your life about the gospel. And though you've lost everything you owned, the the thing you get in the end will far supersede this. I want to say to you, The decisions you make now that are faith decisions will not just shape your life, they will shape communities' lives. I was chatting to a man of mine, and and a lot of people go to him for advice. And he said, Ross, this is the most important spiritual time of my life because how I speak, the words that I have, the privilege God's given me of speaking into people's lives, right now, it matters. And I want to say to you, right now, you as a child of God have the ability to settle people's hearts by getting your head and heart into these scriptures, or you have the ability to stir fear and create chaos and allow people to drift into running away and all kinds of things that we've seen again and again throughout KZN. But I would ask of this congregation that in this season, you'll be like a tree, that your roots will go down deep and that you'll begin to create stability wherever you are. So as we wrap this up, here's what I I want to ask you to discuss. How are you specifically going to make sure that your heart stays true to trusting God and that you stay focused in this next season so that you just dissipate fear around you and create a space of safety and peace. 
Have that chat, and I, I pray that God just gives you his abundant peace and his love. So I pray, Jesus, that your people will be like the tree whose roots go deep, whose leaves are always green, and who bear fruit season upon season. Will you bless them with your shalom? Amen.